guys, this is Lail Bautista from the Investing Mom channel and I'm here again to share with you the basic concepts in forex trading. So here are the topics to discuss. So at the end of this video, you will learn what is forex, the business behind in forex trading, some forex basics we're in we will discuss on how to read forex codes, learn about the base and code currencies, bid, ask, and spread prices. You will know about what is PIP, lot, and leverage. We will also discuss the different currency pairs. We will also discuss on what is the best time and day for you to open a trade. Um, another point to discuss is the types of forex orders and lastly, you will learn how to calculate your potential profit or losses on a specific trade. Okay, we have a lot of topics to discuss, so let's start. First is, what is Forex? So, ang Forex ay short term ng foreign exchange. Minsan, aside from Forex, common term din ng foreign exchange ay FX. Ang Forex, it relates to buying and selling of currencies with the purpose of making profit of the changes in their value. Kumbaga, bibili ka sa murang halaga para ibenta sa mas mahal na halaga in just a matter of time. So, on our succeeding slides, pag-uusapan natin ang negosyo ng Forex trading at kung paano natin ito pagkakakitaan. So, Forex market is open 24 hours, 5 days in a week. So, that's Monday to Friday. Forex market is traded across by banks, institutions, and retail traders worldwide. Kaya, may tuturing, na, may tuturing ito na open any time of the day na merkado. Kung ikukumpara lang natin ang Forex market sa ibang financial markets like, for example, uh, stock market. Walang centralized marketplace ang Forex. So, ang ibig sabihin lang po nito ay, hin ay pwede ka mag-trade ng currencies in whatever market that is currently open. So, good news po ito sa mga taong gustong gawing part-time ang negosyo ng Forex trading kasi makakapili ka ng, uh, kung, ng oras kung kailan mo gusto mag-trade. So, for example, kung umaga, tanghali, or gabi. So, pag-usapan po natin maya-maya kung kailan ba nagbubukas ang apat na kinikilalang forex market sa kasalukuyan na may malakas na palitan. So, forex is the largest market in the world with turnover of approximately $4 trillion per day. Since ang forex market is so enormous, it is also extremely liquid. Isang may tuturing na malaking advantage natin ito sa forex trading. So, bakit? Because you are never stuck in a trade. Kung bumili o nagbenta ka, madalas ka makakahanap ng katapat sa merkado that is willing to take the other side of your trade. So, forex trading is like any other business. So, eh, on, our, on the latter part of our discussion, pag-uusapan natin uh, ng mas malawak kung bakit kinoconsider na isang negosyo ang forex trading. So, it is a serious business. Isa sa malaking pagkakamali ng mga baguhang uh, forex traders ay hindi nila tinuturing na isang negosyo ang forex trading. Nagsimula sila na walang kaalam-alam sa sistema ng forex trading at nabubuhay sa maling konsepto at tinuturing na get-rich-quick scheme ang forex trading. At dahil nasa maling konsepto sila, tinuturing nila na ang forex trading ay isang trip sa kasino and many of them end up behaving like drunk gambling addicts instead of a calm and calculating traders. Kung gusto mo talaga magtagumpay bilang isang forex trader, about you have to think of it as a serious business because it is. Kasi kapag nalaman mo ang tamang diskarte na swak sa personality mo bilang negosyante, ay magagawa mong panghabang buhay na negosyo ang forex trading. At ang pangarap mo na makali sa estado, estado mo bilang empleyado or even financial independence ay abot kamay mo na. Okay. So, 
in any other business, the question is, how do we make money? Halimbawa, meron kang isang restaurant. So, bilang isang negosyante, bumibili tayo ng mga sangkap sa murang halaga. nag tayo ng mga cooks and crew para magluto at mag-prepare ng meals. And at the end, we will sell it at a higher price in the menu. So, that's how you make money in a restaurant business. Ganon din naman po sa forex trading business. Ang malaking difference lang naman talaga ay you are not buying or selling physical products, but you are buying or selling currencies. Pero alam niyo po ba na may pangyayaring nagsasagawa ka na ng forex trading sa tuwing pera ang pag-uusapan? So isang malaking halim or isang magandang halimbawa ay ang mga kababayan nating OFW na may na nagpapadala ng pera sa kanilang pamilya sa Pilipinas. Katulad lang po ng aking nanay na nagtatrabaho sa Hong Kong. Siyempre, ang pinakamadaling paraan para sa nanay ko ay pumunta sa mga remittance center. At, ang, at gamit ang kanyang Hong Kong dollar, ay napapalitan ito ng Philippine peso na siyang natatanggap na, na namin dito sa Pilipinas. Sa mga ganong pagkakataon, nakakapagsagawa na siya ng tinatawag na forex trading dahil pinapalit niya ang kanyang Hong Kong dollars kontra sa Philippine peso. May tuturing na isang napakagandang negosyo ang forex trading. Um, several reasons uh, immediately come to mind. So let's start with a few selfish reasons. Number one, you can do this job from nearly anywhere. So, kailangan mo lang ng computer, iPad, or mobile de device, at syempre, internet connection. You can trade while on a vacation. Pwede ka mag-trade habang nagkakape sa paborito mong local cafe, cafe. So, in short, anywhere in the world, you can run this business. Minimal investment. Siyempre, kung nagsimula ka ng ibang business, like for example, uh, restaurant, kailangan mo maglabas ng napakalaking puhunan para lang makapagsimula. Pero sa negosyo ng forex trading, the only capital you need is a trading account and proper education. Siyempre, kung magkano ang kailangan mo i-deposit sa trading account mo for, uh, uh, for you to earn a living will depend on your skill as a trader. Pero may mga ibang broker na go-offer ng minimum $5 para makapagsimula ka sa pag-trade. No overheads. For example, sa restaurant business, kailangan mo mag ng space, mag-hire ng mga tao. At syempre, kailangan mong intindihin ang inventory ng iyong negosyo na isa sa sakit sa ulo na maaari mong maranasan. Pero sa forex trading business, you don't have to worry about overheads like any other business. Kumbaga, sarili mo lang iintindihin mo. Ikaw ang boss at hawak mo ang oras mo. Recession proof. So isa sa pumapatay sa isang negosyo ay ang recession wherein people are not spending money. But in the business of forex trading, you can make money wherein kikita ka kahit tumaas o bumaba ang halaga ng salapi, basta lang nasa tamang direksyon ka sa trade. In short, uh, we can make money regardless of the economic condition. So marami pang reason kung bakit magandang pumasok sa forex trading business. Pero ang tanong, para ba sa iyo ang ganitong negosyo? Siyempre, Kung tatanungin mo ako kung madali lang bang intindihin o pasukin ng forex trading, well, sasagutin lang din naman kita ng isang tanong, which is, madali bang magnegosyo? Malamang, of course not ang magiging sagot mo. Kasi kung madali, kung lahat ay madali, edi bawat isa sa atin ay, nasa, ay mga multi-millionaire na. So, baka wala nang magtatrabaho kasi lahat ng, lahat ng tao ay nasa bahay na lang, at kumikita ng pera by just clicking a button at their computer screen. So, kung papasok ka sa ganitong negosyo at nagahangad na maging successful, of course, you should be willing to work hard, master the professional skill of trading, and willing to take risk. Okay, so... Ngayon, pag-usapan natin yung money changer versus forex trading. 
So, naka-experience na po ba kayong pumunta sa isang money changer? So, well, madalas po naman po kung mapapansin nyo na may mga money changers na makikita sa mga malls. Na siyang patunay na maganda at matatag ang forex business. So, if you have experience um, going to a money changer, malamang mapapansin nyo po itong electronic board. And... Bali po, dito nakapost yung current buying and current selling uh, current se selling price na inyo pong papapalitan. For example po, kung galing kayo sa Saudi, malamang ang bit-bit nyo pong pera ay Saudi Arabian Real na hindi nyo po maaaring gamitin sa gagawin mong transaction sa Pilipinas dahil ang pera sa Pilipinas ay Philippine Peso. So, kailangan mo pong gawin ay palitan ng dalamong Saudi Arabian Real sa Philippine Peso. Kung kaya, buying price ng Saudi Arabian Real ang titingnan mo. So, kung ikaw naman po ay muling babalik sa Saudi, wherein kailangan mo po ng uh, Saudi Arabian Real, ang titingnan nyo naman po ay ang selling price nito. So, kung mapapansin nyo po, magkaiba ang buying and selling price na nakapost sa mga money changer electronic board. Bali po, uh, yung difference, price difference ng buying at selling ng isang currency ay ang masasabing profit na ng mga money changer. So, malinaw po ba? Nag naging example ko po ang money changer business dahil ang sistema pong sinusunod ng money changer business ay katulad din po sa forex trading. Kasi po, kung maintindihan po natin ang ang sistema ng money changer ay eh madali, madali mo ring maintindihan ang forex trading. Okay, so ngayon mag-start na po tayo with the forex basics. Siyempre, as a trader, each one of us uh, should be aware of the basics. Kaya on this point po, we will know how to read forex quotes. So in forex, Currencies are always quoted in pairs. Very different po siya when, when we compare it to, to the stock market. Kasi sa stock market, if you ask the current price per stock, for example, ng Jollibee, which is currently 267 pesos, yun na yung price quotation per stock ng Jollibee. Pero when we talk about currencies, uh, price quotes should be in pairs. Mali kong itatanong mo na, ano bang current price ng USD? So, so price of USD versus what? So, it could be USD versus Euro, uh, USD versus Yen, o USD versus Peso. Basta tandaan nyo po, lang, uh, nyo po lagi na ang Forex is, uh, is always quoted in pairs. So, kasi in a foreign exchange transactions uh, that takes place, we are simultaneously buying one currency and selling another. Okay, for example, meron po tayo rito foreign exchange rate for the USD versus Philippine Peso. So, pag-usapan po natin ang bawat bahagi nito. Ang unang currency sa kaliwa ng slash ay tinatawag na base currency na sa ating halimbawa ay ang US dollar. Habang ang pangalawa namang currency sa kanan ay ang tinatawag nating counter o mas kilalang coat currency na sa ating halimbawa ay ang Philippine peso. At ang ikatlong bahagi naman po ay tinatawag na exchange rate. So when buying, the exchange rate tells you how much you have to pay in units of the code currency to buy one unit of the base currency. So, ma sa madaling salita lang naman po, 53.2170 pesos ang kailangan mong bayaran upang makabili ka ng isang dolyar. So, when selling, the exchange rate tells you how many units of the code currency you get for selling one unit of the base currency. Ibig sabihin lang po nito, kung magbebenta ka ng isang dolyar, makakantang makakatanggap ka naman ng 53.2170 pesos. So, ganun lang po kasimple. So, on this point, pag-usapan po natin ng additional basic concepts sa online forex trading. Sa forex code po, meron tayong tinatawag na bid and ask price. Ang dalawang term po na ito ay 
ay ginagamit from the perspective of the forex bro broker. Meaning, this is not the price that you will bid when you want to buy a currency pair or a price that you will ask when you, when you want to sell. So please take note of that. Una po is the bid. So this is the price at which your broker is willing to buy the base currency in exchange for the quote currency. This means that bid is the best available price at which you as a trader will sell to the market. Sa madaling salita, tayong mga trader, kung magbebenta tayo ng currency, we will pay attention to the broker's bidding price. For our example, kung magbebenta tayo ng euro which is our, our base currency, you'll need to accept the current broker's bidding price of 1.1655. So next is the ask. Okay. Ask is the price at which your broker will sell the base currency in exchange for the quote currency. This means that the ask price is the best available price at which you will buy from the market. So, ang ibig sabihin ng po nito, when you are the potential buyer, you will pay the broker's asking price for the currency. So, uh, example po natin, kung bibili tayo ng euro, magbabayad po tayo ng 1.1665. Sunod naman po natin pag-usapan eh ang spread at pip. So, you will often hear these terms in forex context. So, ang spread po is the difference between the bid and the ask price. Um, ito po bali ang kinikita ng mga, um, ng mga brokers sa bawat trade na ina-execute po natin. For example po, that's 1.1665 minus 1.1655 which is equal to 0.0001 or 1 pip. So, moving forward, pag-usapan naman po natin kung ano ang pip. So, pip is the acronym for price interest point. It is the unit of measurement to express the change in value between two currencies. It is usually the fourth decimal place of a quotation. Um, we must be aware that most currency pairs are out to four decimal places except for Japanese yen because they only have two decimal places. So in any time you have um, Japanese yen in the pair like um, dollar yen, pound yen, anything with yen, the pairs are quoted to two decimal places. Um, we also have pipet which is uh, the fractional pips. So, this is the fifth decimal place of the quotation. So, while on the Japanese yen, it is the third decimal place. Ang pipet, hindi na natin masyadong uh, pagtutuunan ng pansin and we will focus more on pips. Okay, so on this quote, it tells us that 1 euro is equivalent to um, 1.1655 USD. So, when the euro USD moves from 1.1655 to 1.1660, so the euro USD gone up by 5 pips. So, when the euro USD moves from uh, 1.1655 to 1.1645, it means that the euro USD has gone down by 10 pips. So, ganun lang po ang pagkakalculate ng pip. Okay, nabanggit ko sa inyo that anything with um, Japan yen, the pairs are quoted to two decimal places. So, for yen forex pairs, pip represents the second decimal place of, of the code. So, on this code, it tells us that one uh, US dollar is equivalent to 98.55 Japan yen. So, when the Japan yen moves from 98.55 to 98.65, uh, the USD JPY has gone up by 10 pips. Uh, when the USD JP, uh, JPY moves from 98.55 to 98.52, the USD JPY has gone down by 3 pips. 
So, importante lang po na maintindihan nating mabuti ang PIP kasi isa ito sa mga value na kailangan upang makompute mo ang potential profit or loss mo sa isang trade. Pag-uusapan po natin on how we calculate our profit or losses in the latter part of the discussion. Okay, now we are going to talk about lot in forex trade and in the forex market. So lot refer references the smallest available trade price or size that is that you can place when trading the forex market. In forex market, when you buy sell, you are buying or selling units of currencies in lots. So it is very important for us to to note that lot size directly impacts the risk that we are taking in every trade. So meron tayong iba't ibang lot sizes na available. Meron tayong standard, meron tayong mini, micro, at minsan may mga broker din na go offer ng nano. So discuss ko sa inyo isa-isa. Una ay ang standard lot. It is a 100,000 unit lot. So that is 100,000 USD uh, trade if you are using or if you are trading in dollars. So, kung kukumpitin po natin ang average uh, pip size for a standard lot, that will be uh, $10 per pip. So, just to give you an example, uh, you buy one standard lot of Euro USD and you are, are down with 10 pips. So, that is $100 loss for you. Kaya itong standard lot ay nababagay sa mga institutional size accounts. Kung gusto mo mag-trade using a standard lot, kailangan mo uh, kailangan may puhunan kang 25,000 US dollars o higit pa. Next ay ang mini lot na may 10,000 units of your account funding currency. So kung may dollar-based account ka and and trading a dollar-based pair, ang bawat pip sa iyong trade ay katumbas ng halos 1 dollar. Next is the um, uh, is the micro lot. So it is a 1,000 unit of your account funding currencies. And lastly, may mga ibang broker na nag offer ng nano lot that is equivalent to 100 units of account funding currency. For those of you who are using MT4, MT5 platform, nag input tayo in terms of lot size. For example, di ba ang one standard lot ay equal sa 100,000 units? So, kung ang gusto mo lang, gusto mo lang gamitin ay 0.5 lot, that's 50,000 units. So, kung 5 lots naman, ang gusto mong gamitin, that's equivalent to 500,000 units. Okay? So, next is, what is leverage? So, leverage is the ability to use something small to control something big. Kasi po, sa forex trading, Ibig sabihin lang po nito ay kahit may maliit kang kapital, kaya mong kontrolin ang malalaking halaga sa merkado. Sabi nga po dun sa nabasa ko, ito daw ang sekreto ng pagyaman ng iilan at pagkapulubi ng karamihan. Kung baga sa tamang paggamit, madali, madali ka talang yayaman. Pero sa maling diskarte mo, uh, ubos ang puhunan mo sa isang iglap lang. Ganon kalaki ang impact ng leverage sa trading account mo. Okay, for example, currently, ang palitan ng euro kontra dolyar ay kasalukuyang nasa 1.1655. Gusto mong bumili ng 10,000 units of 10,000 euros. Kung wala kang leverage, kailangan mong mamuhunan ng nagkakahalaga ng 11,655 US dollars para lang makabili ng 10,000 euros. E kung ang puhunan mo o equity mo lang ay 30 dollars. Sa tingin mo, makakabili ka ng 10,000 euro. Siyempre, isang malaking hindi. Pero sa power ng leverage, makakabili ka ng 10,000 euros kahit 30 dollars lang ang pera mo. Ang iba't ibang broker may kanikaniyang offer. Offer yan na leverage based on their rules and regulation. Sa current kong broker, which is XM, pinakamatas na offer na or pinakamatas na amount na offer nila ay ang one is to 888 leverage. So, di ba exciting yung leverage? Pero, syempre, kung i-utilize nyo ang power ng leveraging, dapat wise kayo sa paggamit nito. Okay. Um, 
Since nagsisimula pa lang tayo explore ang mundo ng Forex, then it is important for us to know what are the different currency pairs are. Kasi sa Forex, we will deal with two currencies at a time. Halimbawa, gusto mong ibenta ang US dollars mo, then you need to know what you are selling it for. Sabihin na natin gusto mong ibenta ang US dollar mo kapalit ang Philippine peso. Sa ganitang scenario, we are trading the USD Philippine peso currency pair. So, sa Forex, we have three types of currency pairs. We have major, minor, and exotic. Pag-uusapan natin yan isa-isa sa inyong, para sa inyong karagdagang kaalaman. So, major currency pairs consist of the most frequently trading currencies globally. So, may pito tayong currency pairs under this category. Nangunguna na ang Euro-Dollar. Second is pound dollar. Then we have dollar Swizzy, dollar yen, Aussie dollar, Kiwi dollar, and lastly, dollar Luni. Ang pitong currency pairs na ito are the most traded pairs in the forex market. These pairs are also the most liquid wherein you are able to trade them virtually always. Isa pa sa katangian ng mga currency pairs na ito ay ang pinakamababang spreads o brokerage costs. Kapag ito ang trade mo. Kung mapapansin nyo, sa bawat um, major currency pair, meron tayong uh, US, US dollar on one side. Sa kadahilan ng ang US dollar ang pinakamalaking reserve currency sa mundo. Kaya um, madalas nating naririnig na dollar is the king. Next type is the crosses or minor currency pairs. Basically guys, ito ang currency pairs that doesn't include the US dollar. So, ito ang ilan sa minor currency pairs. So, we have uh, Euro Pound, Euro Aussie, Pound Yen, Swiss Yen, Kiwi Yen, Pound Looney. Basta ang tandaan nyo lang na ang widely traded minor pairs consist of Euro, Yen, and British Pound. Ang huling type ay ang exotic pairs. Hey guys, huwag nyo agad i-judge just because of the name type ha. Pag-usapan muna natin kung anong katangian nito. Well, the exotic pairs are the currency pairs that includes a major currency and the currency of the developing economy. Hindi ganun kaliquid ang mga pairs na ito kung i-compare natin sa major and minor pairs. At dahil hindi siya heavily traded, medyo mataas ang spread o brokerage fee kung trade mo ang pairs na ito under this type. Just to give you some example of exotic pairs, uh, we have US dollar versus Philippine peso, US dollar Hong Kong dollar, US dollar Singapore dollar, Euro Turkish lira, and Australian dollar versus Mexican peso. Okay, since we already know the three different types of currency pairs, now the question is, which pair should we trade? Siyempre, ang sagot, sagot dyan, eh, depende pa rin sa yung experience as a forex trader. Kung bago lang tayo sa ganitong negosyo, masasabi ko na magandang mag-stick tayo sa major and minor pairs. Kasi napaka-liquid nito at maging, magiging madali para sa atin to find trades. At pangalawa, uh, mababa ang spreads. Kung gusto niyo namang i-push ang pag-trade ng exotic pairs, well, wala namang masama. Paalala lang na high risk ito, but they can pay off more significantly basta alam mo lang ginagawa mo. Alright, kung matatandaan nyo, nabanggit natin na ang forex market ay bukas 24 hours a day for 5 days. Na may tuturing na magandang bagay para sa mga, day jo- sa mga may day jobs kasi... You can trade forex outside your working hours. So let's take a look at what 24 hours a day in the forex world looks like. So maraming forex markets sa buong mundo. May may tuturing na maliliit at meron din namang malalaking merkado. Pero apat lang kinikilalang forex market sa kasalukuyan ang may malakas na palitan. Ngayon, bilang mga bagong traders, pag-usapan natin ang oras ng pagbubukas ng bawat merkadong ito dahil importante natin itong malaman. 
We will also talk about the best time to trade Forex. So we already know that Forex market is 24 hours a day at nahahati ito sa apat na major trading sessions. So we have uh, the Sydney session, the Tokyo session, London session, and of course, the New York session. However, this trading session uh, hours do change depending on the time of the year. Of course, this is because of what we call the daylight savings. So, ano bang ibig sabihin nito? Okay, during the spring or summer periods, that's around March or April to October or November, the Sydney session where the Australians start trading and the Aussie dollars start being active is the is happening during 5 o'clock p.m. to 2 o'clock a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So, ikong, ikoconvert lang po natin ito sa Philippine Standard Time. That's 5 a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. I also included the local time where the Sydney market opens and closes. As we know, between uh, Sydney, Australia and the Philippines, we have two-hour time difference. Moving on, we also have the Tokyo Session that opens during 8 o'clock p.m. to 5 o'clock a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. As we convert it to Philippine time, that's 8 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m., wherein the Japan yen starts getting active. Between Tokyo, Japan, and Manila, Philippines, we have one hour difference. Talking about the London session that opens during 3 o'clock a.m. to 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern uh, Daylight Time, when we're in the euro pound start starts getting active converting it to the philippine uh, standard time that's three o'clock p.m to 11 o'clock p.m we're in manila is seven hours ahead of london lastly we have the new york session it opens every eight o'clock a.m and closes every five o'clock p.m edt in the philippine time that's eight o'clock p.m to five o'clock a.m so, Philippines is 12 hours ahead of New York. So, as we move on to the fall or winter period that's happening during October, October or November to March or April, uh, looking at on the Sydney session, mapapansin natin na nag-shift ito ng dalawang oras pabalik on the Eastern Time Zone na supposedly one hour lang dapat. Pero tandaan nyo lang, as the U.S. time shifts one hour back, Sydney actually moves forward by one hour because seasons in Australia are opposite. Sa Tokyo session, nag-move nag -move siya ng one hour backward on the EST. So, converting it to the Philippine Standard Time, that's 8 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. For London and New York session, it moves forward by one hour. So, for London, that's 4 o'clock p.m. to 12 o'clock a.m. Philippine time. For New York session, it will open at 9 o'clock p.m. And, it, and closes at 6 o'clock p.m. Philippine Standard Time. Now, we are very much aware na about, na about the Forex trading hours. So, ang question naman ngayon, what is the best time for us to trade Forex? Of course, even if the forex market is a 24-hour market, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is all it is active all day. As we know in forex, we make money as it moves up or even if the if the market moves down. But the challenging part of making money in forex is when the market doesn't move at all. Kaya as traders, it is important na malaman natin kung kailan ang merkado ay napaka-aktibo. Okay, kung mapapansin nyo dito sa historical early trade activity, on the London session at lalong-lalo na sa time overlap nito sa New York session, kapansin-pansin ang pagtaas ng trading activity. So, ibig sabihin lang nito, highly volatile ang market during this time. Magandang opportunity ito para sa ating mga Pinoy, lalong-lalo na sa mga may 9 to 5 jobs na gusto mag forex kasi during 3 o'clock p.m. to 11 o'clock p.m. Philippine time makakasabay tayo sa mabilisang paggalaw ng merkado you can able to trade forex outside your working hours 
Okay. Makikita nyo sa graph na ito kung bakit napakataas ng trading activity during the London session at lalong-lalo na sa time overlap nito sa New York session. Kung mapapansin nyo, dollar is the most traded currency taking up 84.9% of all transactions. Pumapangalawa naman ang euro with 39.1%. So that's why it is considered as the busiest time of the day as traders from the two largest financial centers, which is London and New York, begin docking it out. Okay, ngayon alam na natin kung ano ang pinakamagandang oras para mag-trade ng Forex. Siyempre, it is good to know the best days of the week to trade Forex. So on this chart, you will see the average pip range for the major pairs for each day of the week. Kapansin-pansin naman na maganda mag-trade during the middle of the week since this is when the most action happens. So that's every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Kaya bilang isang trader, kailangan alam mo din kung kailan maganda mag-trade at kung kailan hindi. So here's the uh, quick cheat sheet of the best and the worst times, of, times to trade as per babypips.com. So, when, best times to trade when two sessions are overlapping. There are also times when major news events come out to potentially spark some volatility and directional movements. Make sure you bookmark the market hours cheat sheet to take note of the opening and closing times. The European session tend to be the busiest out of the three. The middle of the week typically shows the most movement as the pip range widens for most of the major currency pairs. Worst times to trade? Sundays, everyone is sleeping or enjoying their weekend. Fridays, liquidity dies down during the latter part of the U.S. session. Holidays, everybody is taking a break. And major news events, of course, you don't want to get whipsawed. And during the episode of Game, Throne, Game of Thrones, the NBA Finals, or the Super Bowl. Alright, okay. Now, let's discuss different types of Forex orders that can be placed in the Forex market. Basically, pag sinaping order, this is how you will enter or exit a trade. Generally, meron tayong four types of orders na dapat malaman. First one is the market order. Next is the limit order, followed by the stop order, and the and lastly the stop loss order. So let's discuss each forex types in detail. Okay, market order. So this is an order that is executed immediately and automatically becomes an open position. In other words, ito yung gagamitin mong order kung gusto mong mag-open ng trade at the current market price. Halimbawa, the bid price for Euro USD is currently at 1.2140 and the ask price is the is at 1.2142. So kung gusto mong bumili ng Euro USD at market price, then using this type of order, it will be sold for you at the ask price of 1.2142. Or kung may hawak ang Euro USD at gusto mong ibenta ito at the market price, then you will receive 1.2140. So basically, ang market order ay gagamitin mo if you wanted to enter or exit the market now. Ang isa pang type ng order ay, ay ang limit order. Ang limit order, as the name suggests, it is executed under specific circumstances. Ibig sabihin, may certain specific condition ka na kailangan mag-exist bago ma-execute yung order mo. So, we can place our order to either buy below the market or sell above the market at a certain price. So, under this limit order, we have buy limit and sell limit. The, my, the buy limit order are always placed below current price. As you can see at the illustration, as soon as the market hits a 
price level of the order, buy order is open at a given price. Kumbaga, you are waiting for pullback. For example, if you are trading a currency pair and you believe that the bullish market will go through a correction and then continue to the continue in the bullish trend again, ang gagawin mo, you can you could place a buy limit order na mag-execute lang when the price reaches your desired level which is below current price. Syempre, ang advantage mo dito is that you enter at a cheaper price. Pero Malaki din kasi ang chance na hindi ka masundo or hindi ma-fill yung order mo and you will miss the chance of entering the trade. The sell limit order naman works exactly opposite. Wherein your order is placed above the current price and you will use this order if you ex expect a downswing. Next type is the stop orders. This is the pending orders speculating on a continuation of the uh, current market move. It is an order placed to buy above the market or sell below the market at, at a certain price. Halos katulad lang din naman siya ng limit order. mag execute lang ang trade as soon as the market hits a price level of a stop pending order. So, under the stop order, meron tayong buy stop at sell stop. The buy stop pending orders are always placed above current price, while the sell stop is just the opposite wherein you place your order below the current price. Magagamit natin ang stop order on our breakout strategies. Advantage on using this type of order is we are entering a trade that has momentum. Siyempre, may disadvantage din naman that we need to consider, which is baka false breakout lang pala. The last type of order is the stop loss order. This is slightly different compare sa first three order type. Yung first three order types is used to get to get you in a trade. But for the last order, this is used to get you out of the trade. Which is para sa akin is the most important type of the forex order kasi it limit the losses that the trader can make on any one trade. It is also type of order linked to a trade for the purpose of preventing additional losses if the price goes against you. Kumbaga, this is your safety net para hindi uh, maubos ang pera mo sa forex. So, tandaan nyo lang na for buy trades, ang stop loss level ay sineset below the entry or current price. For sell trades, the stop loss are placed above the entry or current price. Okay, now let's talk about on how we can able to calculate our profits or losses in forex markets. Meron tayong napakadaling formula na dapat tandaan. So, that is profit or loss is equal to number of pips multiplied by number of lots multiplied by the dollar value per pip per standard lot. So, number of pips na pag-usapan na natin at naintindihan na natin kung saan natin makukuha yung number of pips. So, ito lang naman yung difference between the value of two currencies. We also understand kung ano yung number of lots. Again, ito yung trading size that you can... You can place when trading the forex market. Like for example, one standard lot is equal to 100,000 100, currency units. 0.5 lot is equal to 50,000. So we already understand that. Ngayon naman, anong ibig sabihin ng dollar per pip per standard lot? In other words, how much is one pip worth per standard lot? Well, dapat lang naman nating tandaan na ang dollar value per pip per standard lot is equal to $10 or about $10 for most actively traded pairs like Euro USD, Pound USD, and Australian USD. You can also check out yung dollar value for all major currency pairs on the link provided. Pero basically, tandaan nyo lang, $10 ang per uh, ang do, um, dollar 
pip value per standard lot. Siyempre, kung itatanong nyo, kailangan ko bang mag-manual mag compute? Well, the answer is a big fat no. Kasi, all Forex brokers will work all this out for you. Pero di ba mas maganda kung alam mo din kung paano i-calculate? Kasi if you understand this very simple formula, magiging aware ka sa potential profit or loss mo in each, in each trade. Kung baga, may plano ka for each trade wherein nakaset na ang stop loss level mo at take profits level which is very important points to consider. Okay, just a quick recap of what we talk about. Forex is the buying and selling of currencies with the purpose of making profit of the changes in their value. It is like any other business and we need to treat it like one. We also talk about the four major trading sessions. We have Sydney, Tokyo, London, and New York session. We discuss the best time and, and day to trade Forex. We also discuss the major, minor, and exotic currency pairs, wherein we learn the seven major frequently traded currency pairs. We also learn about uh, the base currency, which is the first currency in any currency pair, and also the code currency, which is the second currency in any currency pair. We also learn about the bid, ask, and spread price. Bid price is the price at which the market is prepared to buy a specific currency pair in the forex market. As price is the, is the price at which the market is prepared to sell a specific currency pair in the forex market. And spread is the difference between the bid and the ask price and also known as the brokerage cost. Pip is the smallest unit of price for any currency. Lot is the trade size that you can place when trading the forex market. Leverage is the ability to control large dollar amounts of a security with a relatively small amount of capital. We also learn how to calculate our profits or losses using a very simple formula. We have profit or loss is equal to number of pips multiplied by the number of lots multiplied by the dollar value per pip per standard lot. And lastly, we learn the four general forex order types. And these are the market order, limit order, stop order, and the stop loss order. Okay, that's pretty much about the introduction in Forex market. Hopefully, makatulong itong video na ito sa pagsisimula nyo sa Forex business. Kung may mga question kayo, don't hesitate to post on the comments below. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel. I hope to see you again on my next video. So again, this is Lail Bautista from the Investing Mom channel. Signing off. Bye-bye.